This is the Tom Bigby Tales podcast. I'm Shannon Evans, and I write about Columbus, a small town in Northeast Mississippi. Today is October 4th, 2023. Today's topic is titled Greedy Trademark Grabs and More Bus Tomfoolery. This podcast contains an update on our research on the bus and a discussion on Nancy Carpenter buying Mississippi trademarks for area events that are not the purview of the CVB or the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation. But let's get into it. In October of 2019, Carpenter was exposed by the Dispatch, the local newspaper, for filing for Mississippi State trademarks for local events on behalf of the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation, later named in this podcast is called found the foundation it was a blatant power grab carpenter applied for and was awarded trademarks from the secretary of state's office for six events she applied for columbus mississippi spring pilgrimage in response to the newly formed preservation society trademarking columbus spring pilgrimage this application was just days before the debt foundation met to respond to the preservation society's letter of their plan to remove the pilgrimage events from the CVB and the foundation. This would soon lead to yet another adversarial relationship between the CVB and foundation and another nonprofit in town, the Preservation Society. The Preservation Society eventually sent a cease and desist letter from their attorney for the use of their trademark name in advertising at both the CVB and the foundation. A stalemate resulted, and Carpenter continued to behave contentiously and pettily toward all of the pilgrimage homeowners, to the detriment of attracting tourists to town. Carpenter also applied for trademarks on behalf of the Foundation for Catfish in the Alley, Ghosts and Legends Tour, Kickoff Party, Pilgrimage 5K, and Taste of Columbus. No notice was given to any of the stakeholders, they were they felt blindsided and saw her actions as an aggressive power grab the arts council had been asked by the foundation to take over the ghosts and legends tour several years previous then arts council director jan miller was gobsmacked that carpenter had trademarked the event name without so much as a polite note of her application the arts council board was shocked by it as were Carpenter's own board. Carpenter insisted to the press they always had it trademarked. However, while the name has been in use since 2006, the name was never trademarked. The first application for trademark was approved on October 4th, 2019, and has a state registration number of 14934. Another local event held during that fall of 2019 was Taste of Columbus. Again, the hosts, Doug Pelham and Colin Krieger, who hosted the event as a fundraiser for Main Street Columbus, were listed listed as the host of the event. On September 22nd, the owner of Zachary's hosted the highly successful event that then featured 10 local restaurants and craft beer samplings. There was live music, food, things for the kids to do, and a fun street festival vibe. The event raised $5,500 for revitalization efforts in downtown Columbus. A photo of the check hangs on Zachary's wall. The event was so successful that Main Street director Barbara Bigelow wanted to make it an annual event, and they began discussing this planning for the beginning, the planning committee to meet in the beginning of 2020. CVB director Nancy Carpenter reached out to Bigelow to inform them the next day after the Main Street event that they could no longer use the Taste of Columbus name as the Cultural Heritage Foundation had it trademarked. She applied for the trademark on December on September 23rd of 2019, the day after the Main Street and Zachary's Sunday event, the same day that she called Bigelow. The trademark was granted October 18th, 2019 to the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation. It was another power grab. She prevent, presented to the state that the foundation had been using the name for events since 2017. However, there is no evidence in social media or news sources that support that claim. 
So essentially, she saw a highly successful fundraiser downtown and poached the name via via trademarking and has done nothing with it since. She has created yet another unprovoked adversarial relationship with two very successful businessmen, as well as the director of Main Street. Why? There is no logical explanation. But let's shift to another action by Carpenter that defies logic. Those two, yes, two double-decker buses the CVB now owns are a matter of curiosity to all of us. I was curious what exactly was wrong with the first purchase bus that put it out of service permanently. I asked current and former board members if they knew what specific mechanical issues that Carpenter insisted it had. I wondered if it was in such poor condition that it had not been sold or if it should be scrapped. No one knew. I was told by two additional board members that when asked, she just insisted it wasn't worth fixing and it was not dependable. Since no one knew for certain what was wrong with the old bus, I decided to go to Waters Truck and Tractor, the shop where the CVB contracts the bus's maintenance. I spoke with the chief mechanic, who has worked on both buses since their arrivals. When asked what is wrong with the older bus, the mechanic said, nothing, except they let it sit too long without running it. When asked about its repair record, he went to his computer and read off the entire service history. Nothing significant has been required ever. The batteries, the battery was replaced in 2019. The last service on the bus was in October of 2021 when an air valve broke off one of the tires and was replaced. A valve cover gasket was replaced in 2017. He said that the biggest problem is that the bus needs to be started and run regularly to keep the battery charged and the hoses and gassets tended so they don't crack and dry rot from lack of use. The mechanic then drank a swig of coffee, sat back in his chair, pushed his readers up on his head, and added, You know, the second bus came in with an issue. It had an air pressure problem that we had to resolve before we could send it out for that wedding rental. More coffee. It might just be a lemon. The other one actually runs better. My, my, my. The carpenter curse keeps on coming after those Columbus tax dollars. So now we just have to see what tales she tells to explain why she will need to order probably a third bus that will have to sit in the city yard next to the other two albatrosses we now own in the town. Like I said before, Columbus is the place where Scotland sends their old double-deckers to die. <laughs>